but looking at like what's what's up with the Juarez cartel now, but particularly the growth of what you've got in Juarez, which was which was brought to attention in January, with these kind of narco gangs you now are operating. We call them gangs or pandillas, but they're really kind of a bit different. They're kind of these gang, they're kind of hybrids now between prison gangs in the US, US kind of street gangs mixed with the cartel in Mexico, drug trafficking, human smuggling. So you've got the Barra Azteca, the Mexicles, and the artist assassins. Mm -hmm. Now, with the Mexicles, we've got the great photo of you in prison with the Mexicles. Yeah, uh, I, I should probably, I should probably, uh, probably was a mistake to do the same, you know, like sign of the Mexicles, because that that is like identifying. And I didn't know about it. I, I really didn't think about it. They just like, I, I asked them, like, can I take a photo with you guys? And um, they said yes. And they all did the same gesture. And I, so I did. Um, but then they, they told me like, so this is what identifies you as a Mexican. I was like, well, fuck, I'm not, I'm not a fucking Mexican. And I was wearing gray, kind of like the same color shirt that we're wearing. But uh, I wanted to ask you, like, you, you, you started like saying that you've been covering this stuff like since 2004. What would you think it's the main change? Are gangs getting more to a cartel sort of level, or are they they're more like this? What what are you seeing on the on on, on gangs here. Yeah, so so I would say they, they've become a bit of a new thing. I mean, like, you know, like in the Mexican drug war, it's constantly evolving and mutating. Uh, and the cartels are different in Michoacan, they are in Sinaloa, in Tijuana, in, in Juarez. So for people who don't know so much about these, the, both the Barra Azteca and the Mexicles, they both began in Texas prisons in the 80s. The Mexicles is a bit more in a bit like uh, unclear exactly. There's, there's some news about some particular guy upstate somewhere who founded them. But with the Barra Azteca, it's a bit clearer. There's been like testimonies of Barra Azteca members who've given the kind of clear. So it was prisoners from El Paso, from Juarez, who were in Texas in prisons, and they created this gang to defend themselves from people who were Mexican mafia which were guys in California gangs. So they created this gang for themselves. Some of them got deported, ended up down in Ciudad Juarez to be even more confusing. There's actually a neighborhood called Aztecas in yeah. Juarez. So it fit in perfectly that they became, you know, in that neighborhood particularly, but, you know, anyway, they became down, had this gang. So then they got the bunch of members in Juarez Bunch of members in El Paso, bunch of members across Texas, bunch of members in prisons in Texas, and they're all in the same gang. Gradually, they get more and more involved with the Juarez cartel, doing jobs for them, trafficking guns for them, you know, picking up people and driving them over the border. Then the war happens in 2008. The Sinaloa cartel sends in, um, you know, the army sends in uh, La Gente Nueva paramilitaries, plus federal police soldiers on their payroll and one of the things that the Juarez cartel does is arm the Barra Azteca, give a bunch of guns and give them an, you know, a, an open green light to take out anybody so the Barra Azteca then commit war crimes I mean they go after like massacres, Salvacar, killing high school kids they suspect of being linked to the Sinaloa cartel which probably aren't and then after the war finishes the Barra Azteca, they stay there. They don't give up their guns, don't give up their turf. And they end up being and acting more like a cartel, but a bit of a hybrid. It, I interviewed a couple of Barra Azteca guys in a safe house there. And one of the, the, the language they use, I mean, they're always like las gangas, las clicas, yeah. The language they use is more gang related. The style, their mentality is not, you know, not a cartel about business. It's just also about brotherhood and, and about protecting their turf and that kind of thing. But then they're more serious organized crime. So, more, and a lot of it, okay, local drug dealing, human smuggling, um, shakedowns, um, but also with 
uh, a cartel level of weaponry. Yeah, and 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 I think that uh, eventually, little by little, the Juarez, the the Barrio Azteca began taking more and more leadership amongst the Juarez cartel. And as the war between both cartels started like diminishing, and they they kind of like stayed structured and 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 got a bit on top of on top of the game. Uh, then, so the war ended, and the the last time we were talking about this. You feel that it was kind of like a, an even, an even um, result, like an even fight. No one really won. So, uh, right. So the, the war for Juarez ends up with being a division of the city. Um, and I, I first heard this from a spokesman for the for the city police in 2013. When I visited in 2013, I was doing a story about some. I was doing a story about the university, but I checked out the, the drop in violence, and he was like the divisions there. They divided the city. Goes, you know, they got the so basically they, they got the uh, technological, and you've got on the east uh, Sinaloa cartel affiliates, mm -hmm. which now being means Mexicles, uh artist assassins, uh, and then gente nueva like a bit further down by the Juarez, west side um, Juarez cartel affiliates, Barra Azteca, and then the linea pushing out further out as well. Uh, and then we, you know, so they divide the city. Now, also interesting, Manuel Espino, mm -hmm. who was in the federal government, testified. He was he was in a Senate uh, uh, hearing last year, and he said he came out and he said his video, and he says, um, "We need to have truces." I saw this in Ciudad Juarez, and he was working for the federal government. He's like, "It worked in Ciudad Juarez." Well, I saw it in Ciudad Juarez. Yeah. So, like, you know, I, I mean, I, look, how else did this, how else did you get um, murders in Ciudad Juarez were, like, went down by 85%. There was, you know, like, 15% as many murders suddenly, late 2012, than there was in, like, 2011. How do you get that sudden reduction of murders without some big truce being made? Yeah, no, absolutely. I, well, I, I think it's definitely was definitely a, tra a truce, but uh, but also a matter of like, yeah, they they basically killed each other, and and I think also they they split they split the city, but also what happened is that they split the uh, criminal activities, right? Like, so like most of the smug human smuggling side of it got to the Barrio Azteca, and I think that's also what and a lot of like of of, of the um local drug market cocaine heroin that stayed within the barrio azteca and then meth and 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 all these other more like chemical stuff got to los mexicles los mexicles managed to grow a lot like they do they, they were probably one of the main gangs in in the city uh what what it's still not clear to me is what happened to to los doblados to, to los doble a artistas asesinos uh I don't know if they kind of like became allies for the Mexicles or they just disbanded or are they still their own little gang? That's yeah. that, that, that's not still clear. So talking about the artist assassins, uh, I mean, when I was going back there right during the war and I found this woman who was the mother of one of the members of the artist, artist assassins. Um, and she, they began as a regular street gang. So uh, going back to like 2004, I was looking at these, all these different gangs, they called themselves Barrios. Um, and they were like Las Calaveras, uh, yeah. El Silencio, these different names. Yeah. And they were just these three gangs, didn't have you know much real guns, but they had some guns. And there was a bunch of little murders by them, like just fighting over corners and, and real low-level stuff. So the artist assassins began as one of them in one neighborhood. Now, this woman was explaining... The you know her son was in it and and she she it was it was quite an interesting story she become a single mom with his son and her son joined the gang and she didn't want to lose her relationship with her son so she let all the gang members come and hang around her house so this was the artist assassins that began as a street gang and they were artists mm -hmm. now this guy called Saik and she knew that he was like a real smart guy and she showed me these paintings he did. And these like paintings of like, you know, Saik they done and these kind of crazy paintings of this skull with a metal helmet smoking a refund. It's kind of psychedelic. 
And then they started getting recruited by the Sinaloa cartel. So Sinaloa cartel came to them and they were like, do uh, you start, you know, here's some real guns, here's AK-47s, AR-15s, grenades, and you can start committing murders for us. And you've got money and you can start recruiting a bunch more people. So it's like they suddenly blew up and they were suddenly went from a street gang to thousands of members. Now, the federal agent, and I do think he was maybe approximating this, I mean, you never noticed stuff, but he was like, he was like, there's still like a couple of thousand artist assassins out there. Mm-hmm. Like a couple of thousand of Mexicans, a couple of thousand artist assassins, and about 4,000 Barre Azteca. Um, still, he believed the Barre Azteca were the dominant and most powerful faction in the city. But it is different, you know, the different ones. Now, the Mexicans and the crazy story that came up with the Mexicans was the story of El Neto. And this prison breakout. So January the 1st. Um, now, I first covered that from here in Mexico City. And then I heard more details in Forest. I didn't really realize how chilling and how crazy the details were. That when they, 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 so early morning, New Year's Day, a bunch of people. And you've got this, this, this Mexicles wing of the prison with El Neto, this Mexicles leader there bunch of guys come with their guns now this is real chilling i think a bunch of the guards give away their guns and they put their hands up and they kill them 10 of them one by one yeah yeah the, yes Th- that was that was literally that well that was the third time El Neto tried to escape so he was he was captured for kidnapping so he was facing life in prison that's when when the laws became like super um, you know, like harsh against uh, kidnappers in 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 instead of Chihuahua, mm. so he was in prison for kidnapping, uh, and um, and he was facing life in prison. And he, w- w- the first time was like probably four years in, he was uh, being transferred from uh, the 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 Cerezo, the prison, I think, to the doctor or some shit like that, and then a convoy of his man try to take try to grab him from 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 uh the vehicle that he was being transferred and he lost an eye during, uh, during the during the gun during the gunfight then the second one was like uh, a fake riot inside the prison and he tried to escape he was captured and he was put in solitary somehow i guess he paid his way out he got out of solitary and then he had these basically a mansion cell inside the prison right Nothing luxurious, but still, he had bottles of all sorts of uh, liquor. He had uh, a bathtub, TV, radio, a lot of like drugs, all that, all that stuff. And then the third time is this one you're you're talking about. But El Neto had already lost an eye trying to escape and, and all that stuff. And this showed how powerful the Mexicans were, and how they were running the city from inside prison, which was crazy. At some point, they got even more powerful, or with larger presence in the city than than the Barrio Azteca, which was crazy and also makes me believe that probably these new administrations instead of Chihuahua, uh they probably did like had a truce with a with the Barrio Azteca and, 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 and La Linea to dismantle the uh Mexicles because they were, as they said, uh, well, some sources told me <laughs> they were shitting outside the toilet. <laughs> that's that's literally how 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 some people uh said that the Mexicans were behaving. So I think they they got a bit scared about like, dude, these guys are doing like some crazy shit, and let's hand over a bit of a little bit more power to the Juarez cartel uh, or La Línea and and El Barrio Azteca and get rid of the Mexicans. Very suspicious also that after El Neto escaped. The uh, neighborhood was he, where he was killed was Los Aztecas, the uh, Aztecas neighborhood. So one of the uh, the things though is like I, I, after Mexico he did this crazy escape and then murdered ten prison guards. I mean, it was brutal. I don't know if that was planned or that, that was just like some like spur of the moment thing. He just like killed these guys, and then they hunted him down and killed him within four days, January the fifth. They escaped on January the 1st, morning of January the 5th, he was shot dead. And the federal agent said to us, like, basically, they were pissed. The police, everyone, the police were pissed. You know, you killed, you know, all these prison guards. So they went in there to take him out. So he was done. 
yeah. um, afterwards. Um, but like also the crazy story, uh, they go into prison, they find um, a jacuzzi, they find a bar, fully equipped bar with tequilas and, and mezcal. They find um, also, you know, a, a safe of 1.7 million pesos, drugs, guns, and they find an Egyptian cat. Oh, yes. They found this Egyptian cat who, was, who had the uh, Mexicans tattoo on his side. Dude, they tattooed a fucking cat. And yeah, the authorities rescued the cat and put him, uh, set him up for abortion. And I think now he lives uh, somewhere in Texas. So, so someone in Texas adopted the uh, the tattooed Egyptian cat from the Mexicans. I think we're running out of time. We have less than a minute. Guys, yes, uh, go to now. Uh, Yuan's Substack and and read that article. It's it's great story, great photos, great reporting. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't miss that long read. It's it's really really good one. And again, subscribe to what's what's your channel again? It's YouTube at yeah yeah. I mean we got Yoan Yoan Grillo, Luis Chaparro. Things are here. Subscribe to it. Support. Love. Peace out. You know the score. Also, one one thing, we're gonna be putting out one uh, video on each channel each time. The last time was on my channel. This time it's gonna go out on you on Grillo. If you're watching these now, you know.